Hello and welcome to your 16th Minecraft modding tutorial for Minecraft 1.2.5. This is Sage1121 and let's go ahead and get started. So in the last tutorial I talked to you guys about how to make a block tick randomly and grow in a sugarcane-like fashion. Um, and in this tutorial I wanted to talk about some more advanced ticking functions along with how you would make it so that you can only place your block on certain um, materials. So, the first thing we want to do is make it tick at a certain rate. Instead of just ticking randomly, we want it to grow like once every two ticks. So, this is pretty easy. It's just public int tick rate. And then you return your tick rate. So, we do return, and then this is the number of ticks you want your block to tick at. So if we returned 5, it would tick this block every 5 ticks. And as you know, um, whenever it updates the tick, then it has a 50% chance of growing. So let's just return 2 and remove our random... Actually, no, I'm not going to remove the random... Yeah, just remove the random ticking because I don't have time to sit and watch grass grow. Um, and then we just want to come in here and do set tick randomly false. Oops. And there we go. So let's just go ahead and run. And sorry about the lack of sound. And you'll see it'll tick rather frequently. Normally I set the tick rate to something like 5 just because it can mess with stuff. But as you'll see, it's growing um, the block as normal um, at a f slightly faster rate than it was. So that's how you would do that. Um, and also, I had some people asking me, um, how would you set the height limit or something? Um, and the problem with that is, I'm still working on how we would do that without using metadata, which is very useful, but it's somewhat complicated, and I've actually never used metadata, so yeah, that's why I'm not doing that in this tutorial. So now the next thing we want to do, I'm going to set this to 5, um, because that's what I normally set stuff to is we want to make it so that you can um, only place this block on certain blocks. So let's go ahead and create some methods. Um, and this one is public void, and I don't actually believe it's void. I'm never able to remember this method, so I'm, I already copied it. I'm just going to paste it in right now. And it's actually two methods. So we have, this is the main one. Public boolean can block say world part one world into part two. I'm actually going to change this to x, y, and z. And don't be scared to copy code from other classes. I copied this from the block cactus um, because again, I'm never able to remember this stuff. So if x minus one, and not x, x, just x, uh, y, and z. Then just copy that through to make it easier. And you can keep it at par 1, par 2, par 3, um, or par 2, par 3, par 4, I mean. Um, but I find this to be easier if I have a massive amount of code in one method um, just because sometimes I'm like hmm is par 
let's see, par 2, is that X, Y, Z, I don't know, which is somewhat annoying. Um, so this just makes it easier to read the code. And I'm almost done here. So what this is doing is it's basically saying if, um, and then this is how you would detect a block um, in a area as relative to your block. You would use par one world if your method uses a world variable, and then dot get block material. And is solid is basically it's not air. If it's not air, then well, if it is not air, then return false. This is basically so we want to make sure that it has an area um, around it uh, one by one. So and that's air. So get block material basically determines um, the um, is like is solid and is not solid, etc. So what this is doing is it's basically getting x minus one, x plus one. So if we had a square here, it's getting this, 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 and this, and making sure it's all air. Then we have an else. So if it's all air, then go in here and you want to get this. And this is basically um, getting the block ID of the block below our block. And then you return uh, if i equal equals so basically, if i is block.cactus or block.sand. I'm going to go ahead and delete that because this is from the cactus class. And we want to go ahead and do block.stone or block. Um, let's say sand and dot block ID dot block ID and what's here and let me just go into the block cactus make sure this is all correct oh yeah or I equal equal there we go so now I also want to do it um, to where we have to have a certain block um, around it. So let's go ahead and say the x minus 1. Um, let's delete this. Okay, so now it can have a solid block at x minus 1. Um, now let's copy this and int j equals um, y minus 1, no, we want it to be at the same y level, that we want x minus 1. So, return, oh, we can't have two return methods. Let's see. Um, so what we want to do is and j equal equal block dot diamond block dot block diamond dot block ID or I and J equal block dot block diamond dot block ID. So this is basically going to make it so that our block can only stay um, if it's got stone or sand underneath it and a diamond block on the next X level. Um, now, what we want here, this is on neighbor block change. Basically, this is saying um, if the neighbor block gets a tick. Um, and this would happen if you placed a block next to it or you deleted a block next to it. Um, and what this is saying is basically, if the block cannot stay, then drop the block as an item. And then this is getting the block metadata. And then 
set this to zero. So let's go ahead and run this, make sure it works. And we should be seeing if we, yes, you should see that it all, oops. See, you're changing the neighbor blocks. Now these were still there because you had, um, we placed these before we actually added that code. So that's how you would do that. Now let's make sure we can't place our block. And you'll see it's, oh, right, I forgot something. We want also public void on block placed. And I'm just going to go ahead and copy this. And this is basically saying when you place this block, if not can block stay, we'll copy this. And then let's just copy this code because I don't want to have to type it again. And what did that do? Okay, so this is basically um, setting it so that when the block is placed, check whether or not it can stay there. So um, let it load. And while it's loading, I'm sorry I haven't been able to upload a tutorial in the past few days. I've been very busy and I actually won't be able to um, do a tutorial for the next uh, week or so um, for reasons I won't reveal. I just am not able to. So if there's not any tutorials um, coming out, then that's why. Um, I'm not abandoning you. It's just, that's why. Okay, so let's see. And there we go, it's not allowing us to place it down on dirt. Now, if we try to place it on stone, it's not letting us because we did something wrong. Yay. What? Let's see. Locked on stone. Oh, right. Yeah. My error, not code. Um, I forgot we had to have the diamond block. So, Again, let's see if we want a diamond block. And there we go. So now if we place a diamond block here, it would destroy the block because it's not in the correct position and it's detecting that there's blocks there. If we try to place it here, it's destroying it because it's not surrounded by air except for this side. So that's how you would do that. Um, that's how you would create that. I like how that grew. That's interesting. Um, fake or aha. Uh -huh. So that's how you would make it so that you can only place the block in a certain um, location. Um, and there's some more advanced stuff like the um, creating a stack only so high, which has to do with metadata and all of that stuff, which I'm just not going to get into right now. So I'll try to cover that in a later video, maybe not the next one. I really want to get started on custom furnaces. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching this tutorial. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.